The top will cover three issues of uh, hijab. Uh, the issue of the development and modernization of hijab in Indonesia, and the adoption of hijab by Muslim women in Indonesia, their motive and their thoughts, and the legal arguments on the adoption of localized and modernized hijab in Indonesia provided by a number of Muslim scholars. Uh, well, the wearing of hijab, uh, as we have known, has been uh, a recent phenomenon throughout Southeast Asia, including Indonesia. This is a phenomenon found not only among Muslim women adults, but also young girls. And following this phenomenon, we could find a variety of brands appearing on Indonesian market, such as Ajab Alila, Elzata, Shafira, Rabani, Zoya, and others. These Indonesian markets or Indonesian designers of hijab over number of hijab, I mean, over a number uh, of various uh, styles and colors of hijab. The hijab for prayers, which we call mukana, we always wear mukana when we perform prayers, has also been developed in a number of designs and colors and styles. So these Indonesian uh, designers of hijab for daily lives, for daily activities, and for prayers. Uh, they bought their products suitable for the school, inner, as well as outer dress, pasminas, that complement the style, bandanas, and accessories, and uh, mukana for various uh, places that are uh, easily brought to the places of work. For example, and interesting is also that slogans have also been advertised and ordered by these Indonesian designers. Uh, the slogans such as "Cantik Nyaman Halal," "Beautiful Comfortable," and "Lawful" are offered by one of Indonesian designers to attract customers of a physical comfort and religious appropriateness or Islamic appropriateness and correctness. From this, we could also see that advertisements ex explicitly stresses the necessity of global Islamic dress for good and pious Muslims. Um, so they often in, uh, refer to the uh, Islamic lawfulness of the material, the design, and the styles. And as I have already mentioned, this is, of course, a way of attracting uh, customers, Muslim innocent wearers, uh, in terms of religious values, while these designers also have various colors, fabrics, and designs compatible for many occasions. Uh, this uh, phenomenon shows uh, that Indonesian designers or Indonesians in general have been really creative, both in blending by Islamic and Islamic styles and in maintaining the traditional heritage in the face of uh, the pressures of modernization. And this also touches on the issue of uh, wedding dress. I have to mention that Indonesia with over a thousand ethnic and some ethnic groups boast a variety of traditional wedding attire. We know that each group of Indonesia has its own unique wedding custom and style. Java, for an example, is one of the largest ethnic groups with the most significant influence on national dress. Java has what is called kabaya. It is a long sleeved dress adorned with lace and embroidery. And it is usually worn by Indonesian 
Japanese women in special occasions, uh, in special local occasions or in significant days of locality of Indonesia. Uh, the Japanese uh, Islamic wedding dresses phenomenon actually emerged in the first decade of the 21st century, particularly in urban centers such as uh, Surabaya, Solo, and Yogyakarta. In this context, the brides and the grooms usually wish to uphold Javanese customs and also wanted to obey the Islamic requirement of covering a lot the part of bodies that have to be covered according to Islamic legal doctrines. So following, I mean, in this, uh, uh, I mean, following this phenomenon or in this, uh, in this context, then it is interesting for us to see the aspects of wearing hijab uh, among Muslim wearers in Indonesia. Number of researchers have highlighted uh, two aspects of wearing hijab demonstrated by Muslim women in Indonesia. These are Islamic correctness and patience. And our observations highlight the same two aspects, these two aspects, Islamic correctness and fashion. But we found also another aspect of wearing hijab, which is local or uh, national identity, local identity or national identity. Uh, <clears throat> Well, for the aspect of Islamic correctness, the questions of Islamic correctness of wearing hijab is of growing importance to Muslim women today. Uh, on this aspect, we interviewed a number of Muslim women wearing hijab, and one of the informants, a housewife and a mother, say that she began to wear hijab as an expression of her Muslim identity and for the sake of Islamic correctness or appropriateness. She told us that previously she had felt excluded from her Muslim community uh, because she did not wear hijab. She felt excluded as she told because she was not considered to be correct in her clothing. Although to our assumption, it was uh, her comfort herself that makes her feel excluded from the community of her area. But because she thought that she was excluded because of her un Islamic veiling or clothing, then she initiated to wear hijab. And uh, she then told us that after she wore hijab, she uh, felt that she was no longer excluded from the Muslim community of her area. She uh, felt that she became admitted into the society and she also felt that she became uh, uh, correct, and she felt that she become correct in her clothing. The Islamic correctness is also shown in the issue of wedding dress. And this is clearly expressed by Muslim brides that we interviewed. Before the early uh, 2000s, Muslim women did not wear the Islamic style of wedding dress because it was not yet common for uh, <clears throat> the signers to over Islamic wedding dress. So although Muslim women at the time had already uh, worn uh, hijab, they could not wear Islamic wedding dress the, when they become brides. Uh, and one of Indonesian Muslim women that we interviewed said to us that she was glad that she lives now and she <clears throat> was married at a time that Islamic uh, style had been integrated into uh, national wedding dress. 
these arguments and these statement or these uh, is that <clears throat> admissions of Muslim women regarding the adoption of hijab supports the arguments of researchers who have discussed the trend for middle class Muslim today uh, that often think carefully about the Islamic correctness of their dress and who often try to comply to Islamic guidance of coupling out of. Well, the second aspect is vision. <clears throat> uh, Muslim women in Indonesia, as I have already mentioned, started to wear hijab, and many of Indonesian women wear hijab. However, we still could find that the number of or many Muslim women do not wear hijab. But interestingly, these women who do not wear hijab for daily lives often also wear hijab for various occasions. Uh, those who wear hijab uh, argued actually that wearing hijab does not mean uh, being unfashionable because according to them, hijab is a fashion. Uh, and women who do not wear hijab and who choose to wear hijab only for uh, some occasions also uh, think that hijab is fashion and that hijab can be deliberately chosen or worn for special occasions. For them, it is often easier to adapt when they feel the need to wear it for special occasions, such as uh, attending wedding ceremony or her poses, for example, when they are invited to come to the wedding ceremony and they understand that uh, all of uh, their colleges wear hijab, they also adapt to the veiling of their colleagues and they then wear hijab and they come to their wedding ceremony. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, actually, they feel that wearing skirts without hijab is already in accordance with Islam, but they are agree that in some occasions they need to wear hijab, such as in the occasion that I have already mentioned, in the occasion of attending wedding ceremony of her colleagues who wear hijab, and uh, in the occasion of attending religious gatherings. So they say that when they come to the religious gatherings, they would adopt their uh, clothing into more Islamic uh, into more Islamic form. So then in this case, then wearing hijab or hijab is part of the uh, uh, part of, of, of this uh, then uh, I mean this this attitude of Muslim women who do not wear hijab for daily uh, lives. <clears throat> and this uh, aspect of vision is particularly the case or uh, proper, I mean, it's relevant when it uh, comes to Mokana hijab for prayers. Many women, as I have already mentioned, in Indonesia still prefer not to wear hijab in daily life. But they decided to perform religious obligations as Muslims, such as uh, the obligation of prayers and the obligation of uh, conducting or performing pilgrimage. And at these times, they need and wear mukana. <clears throat> uh, these arguments on this uh, perspective actually is also strengthened by uh, designers of hijab and mukana themselves. According to the designers, Muslim designers, the following and refining the wedding dress is even an Islamic necessity. And these arguments reflect the view of a number of Muslim scholars who say that in the context of wedding, luxury is a necessity and vision can be raised to the level of obligation or hygiene. So in other words, they wanted to say that Islamic correctness and patience go hand in hand. Well, the second 
and I mean, the third aspect is local or national identity. And this aspect is very much relevant with the assertions of Muslims in Indonesia in defining their uniqueness as Indonesians. So wearing hijab, according to them, uh, is an Islamic value or publication, but they also find that wearing hijab uh, can be local, local uh, can be local. So then they feel that with local fabric, local style, local uh, material, and local design, they are showing their national identity as Indonesians and stressing that the localization of modernization of hijab is perfectly acceptable. So in this context, we can or we may recall the fact that female authority figures such as uh, Ibu Zakia Darajat and the wives of two Muslim organizations, NU and Muhammadiyah, including the wife of Papa uh, Abusdur, Abdurrahman Rahim, uh, Ibu Sinta and Muria, uh, <clears throat> wear hijab in their own ways, in their own styles, and in their own form of hijab. So the national or local identity here is very relevant with uh, the I mean, fact that has already been shown by a number of Muslim women figures in Indonesia. And this aspect is also particularly relevant with the observation or performing of, of a pilgrimage or hajj by Indonesian Muslims or Indonesian Muslim women in particular. A hajj observer to find that varying colorful dress, different styles and the styles of hijabs could be of value for them, particularly when they are involved in clothes. So with this uh, uh, style of hijab and with the, this sign of hijab, they feel that they could be easily identified or recognized by other members of their groups of Indonesia. And <clears throat> it is then clear that Indonesians often adopt a distinctive local uniform when making them pilgrimage. And this uh, is uh, usually uh, by <clears throat> wearing a local fabric such as a batik and wear mukana and hijab of the same color and pattern so that, as I have already mentioned, can be easily uh, identified by other members of the group. And it is particularly interesting that the governments and institutions responsible for managing pilgrimage services have adopted the practice of using local uniforms. So then they uh, try, I think, to integrate religion and national identity on an official level. Uh, now I'm moving to the issue of legal arguments provided by a number of Muslim scholars on the adoption of localized and modernized hijab in Indonesia. I would mention a notable uh, spent uh, 17, I mean, century scholar, Sheikh Abdul Rauf Al Pamsuri. He mentioned the development of a localized form of Islamic uh, attire. Islamic head scarf, and he also wrote that Telco or Kodo, it is a special term from Indonesia to refer to hijab, was a correct form of dress for everyday wear. And he also considered that the Telco or Kodo that the Indonesian Muslim wore uh, before uh, <clears throat> had meant. Uh, had met, I mean, the criteria for hijab according to the Sharia. He specified that hijab, of course, should meet the criteria of uh, the length uh, and the looseness aspects. So then he specified that hijab should be long, should be loose fitting. Another Muslim scholar of the 19th century, Hamka, also provided convincing arguments on 
the legal appropriateness of hijab. And Hamka argued that Muslims around the world, including Indonesia, would find ways of adopting Islamic clothing to local, I mean, of adapting Islamic clothing to local cultures. Uh, <clears throat> while observing religious values. And uh, these arguments were also provided by a number of Muslim contemporary scholars. Uh, we know actually that scholars have debated uh, over the exact meaning of Allah, particularly when it uh, came to the issue of wearing of uh, uh, women's hair. And this issue has become part of the discourse and on the modernization of hijab. The modification of hijab, including a variety of colors, styles, and brands, has always been perceived by these Muslims, contemporary scholars, as normal and in, in line with the development of knowledge, technology, and art. Um, <clears throat> a number of contemporary Indonesian scholars of any organizations or background found that any hijab in Indonesia is generally uh, considered correct attire for both daily activities or uh, prayers. They even argue that Indonesia had its own distinct local tradition and that Indonesia, uh, Indonesian Muslims have a good knowledge of Islamic observance, including the daily. To them, accommodating local values does not mean contradicting legal doctrines of Islam. One of the Indonesian Muslim scholars from Muhammadiyah, for an example, said that it was good to wear hijab for women, and it is always good for women to try to guard themselves from the case of others. And she, uh, I mean, he proposed instructive arguments on color and uh, designed about um, to keep and as to others. Colorful hijab is acceptable since color does not contradict Islamic value or Islamic teaching on value. Uh, they, I mean, these uh, scholars found no specific religious text that directed Muslim women to wear a particular color or particular style of hijab. So then they argue that color and style are matter of visions, and variation of the style and visions are perfectly uh, acceptable. Uh, however, they actually are aware and understand that uh, wearing hijab has to meet a requirement of covering aura. So then they agree that what matters in Islamic legal perspective is the form of hijab. According to them, uh, hijab should not be too thin, not too uh, short, and should be loose. Although again, these issues are still debated among Muslim scholars, as they differ in defining the length and the looseness of Hijab. When they are aware of this criteria of wearing hijab and of, of covering the aura uh, regarding the aspect of, of form, they are also aware that in some cases, modern styles and the materials of the hijab could fail to meet the requirement of covering the aura and uh, fail to conform with Islamic legal doctrines. However, they overall believe that wearing hijab of any styles and designs have enabled Muslim women to conform to Islamic teaching. And interesting is that they base their argument, their thoughts and reflections on one of the legal maxims that states what cannot be performed perfectly as a whole should still be performed as far as possible. I think this is what I could present for this DWMCC lecture. I thank you very much for your kind attention.
and I thank you uh, for the opportunity. I hope this is useful, and I'm sorry about the uh, unorganized presentation and about the language of my presentation. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.